this morning. I've got a bunch of my heart. Haircut. Haircut. Yeah. Oh, thank you. He's always dead. Yeah. Just he a dad. Losing to Georgia Tech had to be hard in sure. a number of different ways. Yep. Losing on the play like that had to be. Right. How long did that stick with you and just how personally? Sure. Yeah. And, and I. Yeah, I thought uh, two weeks ago leading into the game, I handled it as about as well as you could. Um, a lot of emotions come up during when you see familiar faces and young men that you really care about and you love and, um, you know, those kind of things. And then to lose the way we did uh, was absolutely heartbreaking. I don't know. Um, whenever you lose a game like that on something that, you know, you haven't seen <laughs> happen before, uh, I think it's going to stick with, you know, with me forever. So it's not something that you're going to get over. You've got to learn, learn from it. Uh, deal with it, help the players through it, and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, um, I thought I handled the week and the weeks leading up, you know, as well as as well as you could. Um, and obviously there was a lot more things uh, that were going on with the program and Ty Lee and all those kind of things uh, that was, you know, kind of a culmination of um, everything. And then yesterday, um, going to the funeral, um, paying respects, um, and Coach Brown and Lonnie Galloway and Mitch Mason and J.J. Jones were absolutely amazing. Um, the love and the care, um, the genuineness of everything that they've done uh, for Ty Lee and his family um, really for the last two and a half years has been uh, nothing short of spectacular. Um, you know, I think in this day and age of college football, it's, you know, I think there's some kind of things that have turned into transactional relationships and from being here with Coach Brown and to see him, how he's handled all situations, but especially this one with Ty Lee and his family, um, it, it just, there, there's so much good in the world. Um, there's so much good in him. And, uh, you know, it was just to be able to witness it. I didn't get as close to Ty Lee as I would have wished to have, um, but to be around his mom since September and just see the resolve and the, strength and all those things through that entire family through Ty Lee was inspiring. Um, I would like that too. I've known Lonnie Galloway since I've known Lonnie Galloway since he was 18 years old. And I don't know if I've ever been more proud of him. We won a lot of games together and we had a lot of fun together in college, but the man that he's become, um, and watching him, the love and the care um, and the genuineness of his relationship with Ty Lee, with Miss September, um, how he has handled himself with his receiver room and really the entire team, uh, I just think speaks volumes of his character um, and obviously um, how Coach Brown has rubbed off on him at the, at the, as long as he's worked for him. Um, there's good in the world, and there's there's really good people that care about others, regardless of circumstances, and are there for them. And it was on full display. Um, I would imagine the last two and a half years, but I've gotten to witness it the last nine, ten months, and over the last four weeks, uh, the leadership, the care, the all of those things have been have been very inspiring. So, with how everything starts up front defensively, sure. What is the primary? issue with the, the run defense, the chunk plays, the explosive sure. plays, and just not being able to stop the run consistently. Yeah, so I, I think uh, early in the season and then it stretches, I mean, the, the defense looks the way it's supposed to look. Um, fitting gaps, playing really hard, which they do all the time. Um, but I think at times, you know, in the, the journey that we've been on, um, and you guys have been on it with us, um, is sometimes trying to do too much, um, hopping in and out of gaps. Uh, on Saturday, it was a lack of communication at times, whether it be a check or the base call or whatever the case may be. Um, just making sure the consistency, and it starts with me, the consistency of the communication, the consistency of the application of the techniques to be used um, has to be there all the time. Because when it is, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Um, then at other times, just things happen um, that as coaches, we've got to make sure that we're 
Um, there are no um, ways that communication or the technique can be at all in the gray. In responding to a similar question, Mac also said, guys trying to do too much. Sure. How hard is it to coach guys to not try to do too much in those situations? Because if one guy's out of place, maybe 10 are in place, but if two are out of place, it's nine. Yep. Then you it, it's tough, them. it's tough. Um, and I think that's just the, the trust and the um, understanding that we've got really good players across the board. And just do your assignment, do your job, and the other really good player that's next to you is going to execute and do his job. And then as a collective, then we'll get off blocks and go make plays. And that's what we have to be consistently doing. Um, and one of the big messages all of last week is every single day, I pulled out about probably 10 to 12 clips of them executing, playing the right way, um, playing with tremendous effort, which they do, and making plays. And that's just what we have to see every single play. And, uh, you know, we, we've got tremendous players um, that are very conscientious. They care very much. Um, and just the, you know, the, the consistency and the communication um, has to be at a high level at all times. I have to ask another follow on that. Sure. The 68-yarder, the one that won the game for yep. them. Was that just a matter of getting whipped at the line of scrimmage, or did someone try to do too much? What would happen? No, that, I'd say that was a more of a thing in communication, and just the, one of the checks that we'd been doing the entirety of the game, or excuse me, the entirety of the second half, didn't get put on, and then another um, flaw in the communication happened on the end, on the edge of the defense, and when you do that at two critical spots, things like that that should never happen happen. Um, you know, it looked like they were playing for overtime, or, sure. or at least kind of playing it safe. Right. Uh, in terms of just well, the game. first, the first, the first play of that drive, they spit it out on the perimeter, um, and as things are going, you don't know because you can't see it's on the other side of the field. Are they trying to run a rollover to get out of bounds so that they're going? Um, so you have to have to do all that calculus in your mind too, um, to what the best thing to be in. Um, but still, the the communication. From the sidelines to the players, from the players to each other, um, and it all starts with me. So I don't want to get too many specifics because I want it to be all on me. I don't want it to ever be on the kids. That's what I was going to ask you. Yep. Did, did, did you feel like was, were y'all were your calls reflective of the fact that this thing looks like it might be headed to overtime? Sure. There, I mean, was that almost like a safe call that right. you all had, or did that get screwed up? Like, right. like in terms of the call, I'm saying. Yeah, there was two different calls, and I won't get into the details of the calls. Um, but two of the base calls that we had, you know, that we're running, cycling through in the second half, um, is what got us. Yep. Were there any uh, common threads from, obviously you touched on, you know, that last play of last season, but uh, the second quarter was kind of similar, I guess, you know, in the sense that, you know, they kind of were able to get some runs, get yep. a field goal range to kind of close out the half. Right. Um, I guess, like, situationally, like, did you notice, you know, common threads of, you know, I guess giving up those leaky yards, you know, in the, right. in the past situation? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was tough. I mean, they had some, um, want to give credit to them as well. Like they, they executed at a high level as well. Had some new wrinkles um, that I thought we got, you know, handled at halftime, handled throughout the sidelines with the iPads. Um, but give credit to them. A couple of the quarterback runs were kind of new things um, that hit um, versus a couple of pressures that were dialed up for some other things. Um, so hats off to them, you know, for making those uh, plays. But you know, we just got to continue to, um, we're really good. When we get our feet set, everybody's on the same page, and we're playing really fast. And so my job is to help these guys um, be able to play at that level at all times. So that's the, that's been the big emphasis, um, you know, with them during the bye week. Jeff, uh, Mac was talking about with this bye week coming when it does after the loss of Georgia Tech and after sure. Ty Lee, that he's sort of treating this as a chance to just start over, have right. this be a new five game season, basically. Is that what you've been preaching to the guys as well, just wiping the blackboard clean? Your yeah, kind of, so to, to echo his point, we're always going to follow the direction of Coach Brown. I mean, he sets the he sets the tone, he sets the the mindset, and so we've gone back and just gone day one install, re putting things back up. Here's how it is on day one install. There's carryover throughout the season with that. Um, but certain tweaks and things that, that accumulate over time. So we went back last week and we just kept talking about day one install, day one install, um, so they can get their feet set and they can play really fast. Let me 
you go back to the last play, Ruck was, you know, we know he's been banged up, but Fletcher sure. Harkless took a shot in the knee sure. and was bad on it. Right. I don't want to call it laying down, but a lot of players were take the other line. Sure. What's the coaching side of that? To yep. Tell a player like Marcus, look, right. you got to get on there, the <laughs> There's, um, so A, uh, Respect Marcus for his toughness. Respect Marcus um, for how he's battled through through things. Uh, tremendous amount of respect for the, the weight he's gained and the strength that he's gained um, in the last year. Um, but that was a teachable moment for him is because the previous play, they run the rollover, the little screen, he gets banged up. Um, it's okay in those moments to get the trainer out there and get somebody that's 100%. Um, Respect to him that he cares so much that he wanted to be on the field. Um, and I'm not saying he was the reason why it happened, but someone healthy could have gotten the play down for a 12 to 14 you know, yard game as well. So um, hate that those learning lessons had to happen um, on such a critical, uh, heartbreaking play. But that's the, that was the coaching point we got back in here on Sunday. You're not full speed. We've got other really good players that can come in and, and let you, you know. But respect to him for, you know, wanting to be out there, wanting to battle it out. But it was a teachable moment. When you look at uh, Virginia, what are some of the challenges that they present on the offense? Yeah, so they've, they've gotten really good players. They've got an experienced offensive line. Um, both quarterbacks can hurt you with their arm and their legs. Um, they make a lot of plays both ways. And uh, so the, just the assignments and the discipline and all those kind of things, fitting it up. Um, they do do some, uh, some eye candy, um, but a lot of the things are going really, really fast. Um, tempoing, um, formation to the boundary, all those kind of things, they, they present problems schematically. Tempo, and they've got really good players that know the system, you know, executing it. What kind of relationship do you have with Coach Elliott? I mean, you were both in the ACC at sure. schools before. Yep, so um, got to know him uh, pretty well his first year in the league as a head coach um, and then stayed in contact with him. Um, and I know they had a similar tragic, uh, you know, thing happen to their program, losing three other players, which is uh, absolutely heartbreaking um, and see the character of him through all of that as well. And uh, so we would keep in contact. And during my year off, I would text him uh, quite regularly because I have a tremendous amount of respect. Um, anybody that shows genuine love and care and concern for their players, uh, that speaks volumes to me. And those are the kind of people that I want to associate myself with. And uh, that's who he is. And uh, he's doing a really good job. Jeff, so along the lines of what Tommy kind of asked you with, with Marcus Allen, is do you guys sort of need to keep a closer eye on, on Heyman Rucker? Because I mean, it seems like he's limited. Um, out there, maybe trying to, you know, be a warrior and, and play through some things. Sure. Like, is that in your analysis of this defense? Do you feel like he's playing less than hundred percent? So, one of the, the biggest things is uh, the level of care we have in the program from all the players. Luke Ross, our athletic trainer, does a tremendous job um, with our guys and making sure that we're tempered in any of our um, activation of our players. And, you know, when he gives the green light, you know, we make sure we, we have that cleared. Um, and then Ruck does a really nice job. He is a tough guy, he plays really hard, really fast. He wants to be out there for his team, um, but he knows that Jacoby Cowan's been playing really well in his stead. And then Tyler and Jay Braun can go and they've got meaningful snaps as well. So absolutely we would never put any of our players in harm's way. Um, so I would, you know, make sure the training staff and Kamen we have a good enough relationship that, hey, we got you, you know, if there's anything lingering or um, anything like that. But, you know, he had some nice plays, but, you know, I think the being out for four weeks, that's a long time to be out. So he's getting back into that, that game shape and those kind of things, um, which I'm glad he had this week to get another week under his belt of preparation. Is that something you have to talk to him about? I hear you on the mechanics sure. of so a guy being available to play. Right. But like in terms of your assessment, right. when you watch him play, I mean, is that something you have to talk to him about? Like, you know, you might not be all the way back here. Sure. Um, 
you know, we might need to be a little more <coughs> with you. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a constant daily conversation with him and Coach Monacino and myself. And, uh, you know, Ruck is, uh, um, what's the best way to say it? He knows his body and he wants to make sure that he's doing everything he can in the rehab room, out on the field, so that he's at 100% when he plays as well. What kind of challenges does Anthony find here? Because I mean, obviously, running quarterbacks, kind of like some of you guys the last couple weeks, I guess, you know, can you kind of sure. game plan? For right, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, I don't want to get into the schematics, um, but a lot of things making sure that we're understanding every single framework of our defense. It goes back to old triple option football, dive quarterback and pitch, making sure the proper assignment and the person who has it in each part of our defense understands it and plays it at a high level. So um, that is the conversation every single week. Um, but then when somebody is as fast and athletic as this kid, you know, it heightens everything in that regard. All right. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, guys.